morning. This is a demonstration of the WJEC Key Stage 4 uh, GCSE practical uh, known as the Burning Food Experiment. The official name for it is the investigation of the energy content of foods. I'm making this video for probably any year 10 students who aren't able to do practicals in school at the moment because of lockdown measures. So you have a bit of an idea of what the practical entails should it come up in your GCSE exams. Of course, maybe you have done this practical, in which case you may use this video as a revision tool. The general way we find out how much energy is in the foods is by looking at the nutritional labels on the packets. However, it's important that you know how we get that information, how we know exactly how much energy is released from foods when they're in your body. It's not ideal, there are improvements that you can make, which I'll talk about at the end. But it does a pretty good job of demonstrating that all the foods that you eat contain some measure of energy. So to find that out, we are essentially going to be setting food on fire. Once it's a flame, it is going to burn, and as it burns, it releases both heat energy and light energy. When you digest food, you turn that chemical energy from the piece of food into chemical energy that you can then use, either to run around, kinetic energy, for your nerves to work, electrical energy, and so on. Equipment that you're going to need for this experiment. Bunsen burner. Heatproof mat. A balance. A boiling tube, tongs, a thermometer, water, a measuring cylinder capable of measuring up to 20 centimetres cubed or above, a clamp stand, food. The food that we're going to be using is some Pringles. Generally we give our crisps or something with carbohydrate and fat because it burns better. Generally, things that contain carbohydrates and fats burn better and are better used in this experiment as a demonstration of the amount of energy that comes out of foods. Crisps are an ideal candidate. Pringles in particular because when you pop, as we all know, you can't stop. The first thing you're going to do is light your Bunsen burner. The reason for this is because you're going to use a Bunsen burner to light your piece of food on fire, your crisp on fire. A common misunderstanding here is that we're using the Bunsen burner to heat up your apparatus. You're not, you're only using it to light your crisp on fire. Once your Bunsen burner is lit, we can just leave that on, we can set up our water. Now, we're using water in this experiment because we don't want to measure the temperature of a flame or of a flaming piece of food. It will be very accurate. Therefore, we use the burning crisp to heat up water. If we measure the temperature increase of the water, it tells us how much energy has come out of the flame. So first of all, you need 20 centimetre cubed of water. We're going to pour our water, 20 centimetres cubed, into our boiling tube. And you're going to put the boiling tube in the clamp stand. Being careful not to over tighten it, because we don't want to smash the boiling tube. It's important as well to have your boiling tube slightly at an angle, just because you don't want the heat from the flame rising up and directly interfering with your clamp stand. You also want this pointing away from you because worst case scenario, it boils, bubbles up and spits out. We want to do that away from our bones. Once we've sorted our water, there's a few measurements we're going to need to take. The first is the temperature of the water. So our water is sorted off at 21 degrees centigrade. It's important to know that because we are ultimately measuring the increase in the temperature of the water. We're going to take our thermometer out, we'll put it back in later. You want to measure the mass of your crisp. And my crisp is 2.21 grams. Again, that'll be important later, I'll explain at the end. Once you've taken the mass of the crisp and the starting temperature of the water, you have your equipment set up, we need to light our crisp on fire. As soon as it's on fire, we're going to place it underneath our water. So hold the crisp in the Bunsen burner until it starts to catch flame. If you take it out too early, it'll just be charred. But once it's on fire, put it underneath your boiling tube. You don't want to move it around or wave it around. You want to keep it in approximately the same place, about, I would say, two centimetres below your boiling tube. As it burns, all of the chemical energy that was stored in the piece of food, in the crisp, is being released. It's being released as heat and it's being released as light. When the flame starts to die down, you want to get your thermometer ready. And once all of the flame has gone out, you want to immediately, carefully, measure the temperature of the water. So the water has heated up because it's gotten all the heat energy from that burning crisp. It's gone up from 21 to 40 degrees centigrade, which means it's increased by about 19 degrees centigrade. 
In normal circumstances, you'd repeat this a few times with each piece of food, and you might have different types of food that you're testing. After the experiment, once you've calculated the water temperature difference, how much it's increased by, you can use that information, as well as the weight of the crisp, as well as the weight of the water, which should be 20 grams, to work out how much energy exactly came out of the crisp. There are, a few, there are a few problems with this experiment, in that when you lit a crisp on fire, it's also releasing light energy, and we can see the flame, that light energy isn't going into heating up the water, therefore that energy is lost. As well as that, even if you're holding your crisp underneath your boiling tube, some of the heat from the flame is going to go either side of the boiling tube, and it's going to miss the water completely, and again, that energy is going to be lost. I hope that's been helpful to anyone who's studying the WJEC Year 10 scheme of work for either double science or for their triple science. Feel free to play this video back and pause it whenever you need to so you're completely sure of all of the steps that you would take if you were conducting this experiment yourself. Bye.